If you were trapped on a deserted beach that no one knows about, what would you do? There's only a few days before you die of thirst and starvation, so I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the death beach in Solo. This man is about to be trapped in the most terrifying situation of his life. Alvaro joins his friends out of the ocean, and Nello here mentions that he's not fit for this life any longer. The older man tells the surfer that his time on the island is nearly over, and Alvaro should enjoy these beautiful oceans while he still can. That night, the surfer is hanging out at the beach with several other people when he hears his friend make a special announcement. He's going to be leaving the island and moving to Canada with his new girlfriend. Shocked, the group questions if he's being serious, but the man admits that he's getting too old for this life and needs someone to take care of him once he becomes senile. This woman Yaiza can't believe the news and proposes a toast along with the rest of the group. That's when the friend turns his attention over to Alvaro and notices that he isn't celebrating. He questions if the man is happy for him, but the surfer snaps out of it and raises his glass to applaud the man in his new chapter in life. The group latch onto their departing friend as Alvaro here looks towards this woman. They decide to leave the party and get some space, where Yaiza questions why the man looks so down on himself. He tries to shy away from the subject, but she pushes him to explain what's wrong. That's when he spots his ex-girlfriend Ona going to the beach party with another guy, and it's clear he's still pining for her. Yaiza consoles him by insisting that he's not strange for having these feelings, as a result of not being able to keep the girl for himself, but argues he can't have her heart and freedom. The woman uses herself as an example, explaining she's always up for some fun and living her life, but even she knows that can't last forever. Hearing this, Alvaro gets up to drunkenly approach his ex-girlfriend and heads straight into the party. Walking up behind her, he starts to cut Alona, but then she turns around. She's not happy to see him and tells the man to sober up as her new boyfriend confronts him. Alvaro pushes him away before he gets punched and knocked to the ground. He's made a complete fool of himself, and his friends have no choice but to take him away. Later, Nella walks up to the man's car and passes him an ice pack, but doesn't say a word. They both know he's screwed up, and the older man sits in the vehicle with him before Alvaro asks what's on his mind, but he's got no idea he'll be struggling to survive the most painful 48 hours of his life. Okay, this is depressing. What this guy is experiencing is the harsh reality of the world crashing against his fantasy. The only consistent thing in this world has changed, and as the Taoists would say, you can try to fight against the current as much as you like, and get nowhere, or you can move with the current to get somewhere. He's spending an awful lot of time trying to stop life from moving forwards like a madman trying to stop the wind in its tracks, and it's this issue that's causing him to make bad decisions and push everyone he cares about away in the process. If he took a step back and looked at his situation more carefully, he might have been able to let go of his past and forge a future for himself. That being said, if he really wanted to get his ex-girlfriend back, he's going about it in the worst way possible. If he had access to wisdom that people have been following for thousands of years, he could have navigated his situation with a lot more grace and saved himself a lot of trouble. The ancient samurai school in Tori Ryu taught a samurai everything they needed to know to become a samurai, and that included how to conduct themselves in social situations. The Tori Ryu Isui sensei knew that samurai had to be ready for anything and be in control of themselves at all times so they didn't make a fool of themselves. That's why Isui Sensei said that samurai shouldn't drink to the point where they enter into disarray. There are myriad cases where people have become intoxicated and have created confusion in important matters. Therefore, this is something that samurai should not do. However, even if alcohol does not agree with you, we see Alvaro do just that. He drinks, feels sorry for himself, drinks some more, and then makes bad decisions that hurt his chances of repairing his relationship. If he had considered this and drank a moderate amount, he could have easily seen a better way of trying to dance with his ex. If he had approached from the front so she could see who it was, and asked if she cared to dance so she knows up front what's going on, and can say no if she doesn't want to. This freedom to say no would have made her more likely to actually say yes and go ahead and dance with them. The other advantage of not drinking to excess is that he would be able to fully remember this moment and be present for people while this chapter of his life is closing. Deciding to be honest, Nello tells his friend that he was acting like a total idiot and points out that he's hurting his ex-girlfriend with his actions. Alvaro insists that he stop lecturing him on what not to do, but Nello tells him to calm down and wonders if he's jealous of his new relationship. Alvaro stays quiet as his old friend keeps poking fun at him and comments that he always does this. Reluctantly, the surfer confesses that he's disappointed about him giving up their plans to surf around the world. Nello questions if he really believed that, admitting that he's deeply in love and needs to follow his heart, but mentions that there's one more reason. He's going to be a father. Shocked, Alvaro rests on his steering wheel, unable to believe that this is going to be their final time together. Nello invites him to come stay with his new family in Canada, mentioning that he's serious about the kid, and their plans of surfing around the world was just wishful thinking. It makes Alvaro furious, and he storms out of the car while his friend follows him, before the surfer reveals that he's booked flights to a private house in Indonesia for eight weeks. 
They were supposed to go there together. And Nello gives the man a hug, apologizing for letting him down. Joking with his friend, Alvaro scolds him for falling in love and offers the tickets. He insists Nello enjoy a two-month-long honeymoon with his new girlfriend and walks back to his car. The older man admits that he doesn't want the tickets, but Alvaro starts up his vehicle and tells his friend they'll meet each other again in the future. The next morning, he wakes up to an alarm on his phone, taking a sip of water and immediately spitting it out. He's nauseous from all the drinking he did and decides to head out to clear his head. Driving along the ocean, Alvaro listens to a voice message from his sister, telling him that he should try to call sometime and reminds him that he forgot to wish her a happy birthday. It's clear she's upset with them and reveals their parents miss him, but their father has gotten weaker from the warmer weather. His sister stops letting him, telling him that he should call them soon, while Alvaro takes out his surfboard and walks over to a secret beach, now realizing that something is about to go terribly wrong. Walking on the cliffside, the man suddenly loses his footing and is sent sliding down the hill onto a wall of dangerous rocks. Alvaro holds himself in place as he looks up at his surfboard before he's sent down even further by the sand. The man is terrified, and there's a good chance that if he falls, he's going to die. Okay, this guy is an idiot. His whole life is changing around him and he's overwhelmed. I get that he wants to get some space and clear his head, but he still should have been smarter here. He left the house without telling anyone he'd be gone or where he'd be going. And while it seems like a small thing, he doesn't know he just made the biggest mistake of his life. Whenever leaving the house, and especially when going somewhere a bit dangerous, it's always wise to inform people you leave behind of where you're going, the route you plan to take, the time you're leaving, and the time you plan on being back. That way, if there's an emergency back home and the phones fail, they can still find you. If he had done this, then when he didn't come back home, his friends could have gone looking down the route he said he'd be on and found him without much issue. Since he failed to do this one simple thing, he's going to have little hope of rescue, which means when things get ugly, he won't have anyone to rely on but himself. He also wanders off with little more than a cell phone and a surfboard. Surfing is always going to be at least a little dangerous, so he should have taken a basic first aid kit just in case. As well as some paracord, a knife, a fire kit, and a water bottle. You never know what you might need when out in nature, as unexpected things happen out in nature. With a small handful of gear, he could have a much easier time with what's to come. But as it stands, when he finds himself in a life or death situation, he's going to need to make the best out of what he does have because he won't have the luxury of dedicated tools for the job. Since he wandered off into the distance without taking supplies with him or telling anyone where he was going, the surfer has no idea he's about to go through the worst time of his life. Alvaro digs his fingers into the sand, but it's not enough to keep him stable and the man slips even further down. That's when he receives a notification on his phone and reaches around to grab it, but begins sliding closer to the cliff's edge. Alvaro struggles to stay in place and tries to open up his backpack as the phone continues vibrating. Suddenly, he loses his grip and slides down to the edge of the cliff. The surfer manages to hold on for his life as the waves below violently crash into the rocks, but it's clear there's no way he's getting back. Thinking quickly, he counts to 10 over and over, keeping track of when the waves come in before he pushes himself off the cliff and into the water, brutally injuring his hip on the way down. With all his strength, Alvaro swims to the surface and looks around for a safe place to rest. He manages to crawl into this large rock to lie down on, coughing out the water he swallowed, but realizes his situation has gotten a lot more dangerous. Looking at his hand, the man sees it's been gruesomely ripped apart, and he takes a moment to assess the situation before trying to stand up. Suddenly, his hip folds, and the man falls face down into the rock where he passes out. In a dream, Alvaro finds himself on a beach where his ex-girlfriend Ona finds him. She jokingly asks if they're still together and sits next to him, complaining about how hot the weather is out here. But then Ona questions why she was brought here to this place, reminiscing about a private dinner they had in the dunes. It's a reminder of better times. But then the woman insists that she's not in love with him anymore, and the surfer wakes up, sitting upright. He looks at his wounds, realizing that his hand won't stop bleeding, and checks to see whether he's paralyzed or not. Thankfully, he can still move his toes, so he's now paralyzed from the waist down, and he takes his backpack off to check on the phone. The surfer discovers that it's broken, and there's not much else inside other than this book. It's a desperate situation, with Alvaro having almost no chance of surviving this terrible fall. Okay, this is horrifying. He was just walking along when one misstep sent him sliding down the sand dune and headed straight for a cliff. If he didn't think fast and take action to slow himself down, then the last thing he'd ever see was this rock. That being said, he didn't handle the situation particularly well. Digging your hands into the sand like this is only going to do you so much good, and jumping into the ocean from this height with these rocks is just asking for an injury. If it were me, I'd try everything I could to avoid needing to time the waves and hope for the best. I'd try to slow myself down by turning my back to the sand and spreading my arms out to catch as much of it as possible. My backpack would even dig into the sand as well, meaning we'd get as much surface area as possible helping us come to a stop. 
After that, it would be a simple matter of taking a path back to safety using our new platform. Either that, or stay put and use the phone to call for help. This follows for the rest of the situation, but when you're in a survival scenario, it's best not to move unless you have a clear and immediate reason for doing so. The more you change your position, the harder it'll be for rescuers to find you. That being said, there's still a chance we would end up in roughly the same position here, and I'd aim to slowly climb down the cliff to this ledge, rather than jumping straight down into the water. I wouldn't trust the waves to break my fall, so I'd climb down to the beach over here, and start to work my way out of this without hurling myself off a cliff intentionally. Of course, if I fell anyways, I'd aim to use a proper parkour landing. By landing on the balls of your feet and bending the knees to absorb the force of the fall, there's less risk of seriously getting hurt. If you thought to do this instead of dropping into the rocky waters, there's a much better chance he wouldn't have broken any bones, and any injuries he received would have been a lot less severe. Unfortunately, he didn't manage any of this, and now his week is going to get a whole lot worse. Alvaro screams out for help, but it's useless. Nobody's around to hear him, so he takes off his shirt to wrap up the open wound on his hand, stuck in the middle of the ocean without a way to escape. Exhausted, the man lies down and looks into the sky to see a plane flying overhead too far to see him. Taking another glimpse at his hand, he passes out not realizing the rest of his things are falling into the ocean. Later, Alvaro wakes up looking around for a way out of here, hoping to get back to dry land. The man is surrounded either by rocks or water, and he realizes the best thing he can do for his survival is to fight through the pain and try swimming. Putting on his backpack, he painfully shifts his broken body into the ocean, while making sure he doesn't injure his hip. Alvaro pushes himself off the rock and struggles to swim his way through the water with his injuries, barely keeping his head above the surface. Lost in the sea, he paddles his way over into open water and searches for a beach along the coast, when suddenly he begins to feel cramp in his abdomen. He's internally bleeding from his shattered pelvis and sinks into the water, fighting for his life to stay afloat. Alvaro is trapped in a cycle of surfacing and sinking in pure agony until he finally gives up. Exhausted, the man drops into the water and has a near-death experience. He's back on the beach with his ex-girlfriend, describing his situation to her and apologizes to the woman for everything. Ona here points out that he's not being honest with his feelings and lists out all the things that he should have said. She's a manifestation of his guilt over how he's treated everyone in his life, especially her, and insists he has to move on. That's when he wakes up underwater and swims back up to the surface with all of his strength. Alvaro begins to have an out-of-body experience as he manages the surface and imagines himself watching Ona walk out into the tide. Noticing his real body crawling onto the beach, he tries to chase after his ex-girlfriend, but his wound acts up and he collapses to the ground. Suddenly, Alvaro wakes up having managed to get himself ashore with an SOS sign written in the sand, but it's bad news. It's already been 24 hours since he fell off the cliff, and he's been here for an entire day, with the situation looking more hopeless by the hour. That's when the man spots something getting pulled in by the tide, and realizes it's his surfboard. Knowing he might be able to use it, the man slowly crawls his way over to the object, but the tide is coming back in. He's only got seconds before his surfboard is taken away, and moves towards it as fast as possible, but it's too late. The force from the waves pushes Alvaro straight into a jagged rock face, and he passes out. Okay, he really should have been more careful with his phone in the book and put them back in the bag right after checking on them. In a situation like this, everything is a resource. He might not be able to check his email with the phone, but the screen is still reflective, which means he could use it as an improvised signal mirror and signal for help. While it's not as good as a real signal mirror, and there's still a chance people will miss it, you might as well try when there isn't much else you can do. He also probably should have rested for a day or so where he was, so he'd be in slightly better shape to actually go swimming, and he would have given rescuers a better chance of fighting him if he stayed put, while using his phone to signal everything that moves for help. Now, if it were me, I'd actually use my shirt to address my broken hip, rather than my hand. I'd try to bind my hips together so that when trying to swim, my leg doesn't start flopping around in the current and make my injury worse. While that hand does have a nasty injury, that shirt isn't doing our swimming any favors on our hand. I'd also try and inflate my backpack with air before going for a swim. That way, I have an improvised flotation device. This might not work if the backpack isn't waterproof, but considering this book was dry, I think there's a good chance it will be. As long as it didn't get any holes torn into it, we might be fine. Then, with my tied hips and my backpack floating, I'd wait for low tides before I made my escape, because swimming under control in these waves would be nearly impossible if we were completely uninjured. When he makes it to the beach, however, the last thing he should have done is to try and chase the surfboard with a set of broken hips. While it might be tempting, there's also been little hope of him getting to that board in time to catch it, and at that point, you drag your body all the way there, wasting all that energy for no reason, and putting yourself in a worse position for no gain. Later, Alvaro wakes up as the waves drag him back into the ocean. 
he struggles to push himself above the water, being swept back and forth until he finds himself near this rock. Alvaro tries to hook his backpack onto it, watching as it slips off multiple times, until he manages to get it caught, but then notices a helicopter passing by in the distance. Alvaro screams out for help, but it's too late, and the vehicle flies away without any indication that it's coming back. Passing out, the man wakes up to a seagull biting at his injured hand and waves the bird off of him. He tries to pull his backpack free from the rock, but the strap rips and he falls to the ground, injuring himself further. The man crawls away and spots a can of soda, but when he checks to see how full it is, he discovers there's only seawater inside. Disappointed, he continues crawling further inland, but realizes that a fishing hook has gruesomely gotten stuck inside his arm. He manages to pull it out, but it's too much for him to take, and he passes out from the pain. That night, Alvaro wakes up and rests against a rock, taking a moment to admire the sky. He knows that his chances of being rescued are getting even lower, and there's no time to waste. Acting quickly, he gathers up his supplies, storing a water bottle, a plank, and a cup to use for his survival. Dragging himself through the beach, he takes a break beside this giant rock and plants his back against it to sit up. He digs through the sand to reveal netting buried a few inches below the surface and scoops out more clumps of dirt with his cup. He takes out a piece of aluminum foil and sticks it into the newly created ditch. The surfer has no fresh water and urinates into his water catcher to hopefully drink his urine, but discovers it's full of blood, making it undrinkable. Later, Alvaro sits in the tide and presses his hand into the seawater to disinfect the cut, screaming out for the horrible pain that he's experiencing. That's when he throws clumps of sand over his wounded hand to stem the bleeding, before taking shelter, using a fishnet and aluminum foil to keep his wounds covered while also keeping warm. Suddenly, he hears thunder in the distance and spots a vicious storm coming his way. Forcing himself to get up, he knows it's going to rain soon, and this might be his only chance to find fresh water. He places his aluminum foil inside of a hole and sets up his cup on a rock, using them as water collectors. Catching several drops of rain, he drinks his first sip of fresh water in over 24 hours and screams out for help, but gets no response. It's clear there's nobody near to rescue him, and the man is losing hope. With nothing else to do, he wraps himself back in his makeshift blanket, terrified of dying, but determined to survive at any cost. Okay, this is bad. His situation is degrading fast, and if he takes too many more blows to the head, he might not be able to think clearly enough to keep himself alive. Alvaro needs to get somewhere it's safe to pass out so he doesn't drown from losing consciousness, and this bird isn't helping at all. He needs to stay focused on solving problems instead of focusing on not wanting to die. In a situation like this, it's natural to worry about death, but if the thought isn't serving you, it isn't welcome. This concept comes from an ancient tradition and was given modern form by Jeremy Weber, and is a powerful technique that Anthony Metavere talks about in one of his TED Talks. The best part is, the basic method is super fast and easy. It doesn't take any special training, and you can use it instantly once you know the method. All you need to do is ask yourself the following two questions, are my thoughts useful, and how do they behave? Asking these questions will help you to break apart disruptive thoughts and to recognize more productive thoughts. Now, while this might sound too simple and easy, it was the method Anthony used to get control over his depression, and is actually backed by both science and thousands of years of wisdom. With that said, there are some useful things he could do while he's stuck here. For example, he could have tried to catch and kill the seagull, but now he has lunch. While we're on the topic of lunch, if he had kept a hold of that fish hook, he could have potentially made an improvised fishing pole and had another source of food. He could even use the less edible parts of the seagull as his bait. All that being said, however, he is doing a good job of collecting and keeping resources now, and in a situation like this, your focus needs to always be on improving your overall position so you can get out of the downward spiral. Making yourself safer in the now is more important than simply escaping because you can't escape if you neglect your basic needs and end up dying in the process. The next day, Alvaro is resting on the other side of the rock with his hand gripped around the nail board. Noticing a bird coming to eat his flesh, he tries swinging the plank at it, but misses and curses the seagull for trying to eat him alive. It's been 48 hours since he's ate, and the man is starving. That's when he hears his phone ringing and looks around, wondering who and where it's coming from. Suddenly, he realizes that it's coming from under the sand and crawls down the beach, digging into the dirt as he hears the ringing getting louder. Discovering his phone underneath the sand, he takes it out and answers a video call from his parents. He tells them that he's had an accident and desperately needs help, explaining that he can't walk with his shattered hip. For some reason, his parents completely ignore what he said and tell the man that he needs to call them before he arrives back in Madrid, promising they have a surprise waiting for him. Seeing this, he smiles and tells his parents that he loves them, confessing that he's never been able to tell them even after all this time. His older sister joins in on the video call, and Alvaro asks her if she's proud that he's finally getting along with her parents, having a proper conversation for the first time in several years. That's when the man breaks down into tears, realizing that what he's seeing on the phone is a hallucination, and he's going to die if he stays on the beach, either from starvation or dehydration. He tells his parents that he tried to drink his own urine, 
but discovered it was full of blood. It's horrifying for him to admit, and at this point, there's nothing Alvaro can do to escape or survive. Wanting some comfort, he crawls over to his surfboard and notices that the design on its surface is that of a skull. He laughs, amused by the irony, but that's when he starts to hallucinate again, standing up to see his friends calling him over for a surf. The man happily runs into the ocean and heads out to enjoy a swim with all the other surfers. It's a beautiful moment that Alvaro knows isn't real, and even though he's stuck on this beach without a way off, the man promises to himself that he isn't going to die. Okay, his mental state is deteriorating quickly, and if he doesn't get control over himself, he's going to die here hallucinating about the life he's never got to finish. The dehydration and his injuries are getting to his head, and if he can't stay focused, he won't get far. Luckily for him, there is a simple practice he can do to see past the hallucinations, recognize them faster, and stay focused on his goal. The best part is, once you know how to do it properly, it can be done anywhere at any time, and can give anyone the focus and calm needed to get through whatever situations they're going through. All he needs to do is anchor himself to his breath. If he can focus on his breath, then when he catches his mind wandering, he can bring his attention back to his breath without judgment. While it might not sound like much, this technique is known as mindfulness meditation, and it's been used for thousands of years by Buddhist monks to train themselves to reach enlightenment. Not only that, but there have been hundreds of studies over the years showing just how transformative this practice can be, and there have even been a few that have shown its potential for people suffering from schizophrenia. While it doesn't stop them from hallucinating, it does help them to recognize when they're experiencing a delusion and to maintain a sense of calm as they wait for the episode to pass. If he was able to think more clearly, he could have thought to use his necklace or this net to tie himself to the surfboard so that he wouldn't fall off if he loses consciousness. If he had done both these things, he would be a lot safer attempting to carry out his escape plan by swimming out into the ocean and wouldn't need to worry about losing focus or failing to move quickly. He could have worked through his pain, ignored his hallucinations, and become unshakable. A good portion of survival is down to mindset and state management. With the wrong mindset, you can have a clear way forward and fail to see it, or you can have an opportunity that only presents itself for a second and miss it because you were too busy feeling sorry for yourself. Hearing seagulls squawking nearby, Alvaro notices several of them have arrived and talks to the birds, telling them to go away before they eat him alive. It's a miserable situation with little chance of things changing, but when the man looks out into the ocean, he suddenly spots the silhouette of a boat in the distance. With renewed hope, Alvaro grabs his board and drags himself over to the sea, reaching the water. He successfully makes it out into the ocean, and the man has swam all the way to open water for the first time since his accident. But there's a problem. Looking around for the boat, he realizes there was no one out here, and with no more strength or hope, he lets go of the board, sinking below the surface. The man begins hallucinating a dinner between himself and Ona, but as his brain starts to slowly shut down, a diver jumps into the water. Rescue services have finally located him, and the man is dragged to the surface, where he's carried back to civilization in a helicopter. A few days later, he talks to his friend Nello at the hospital, and Alvaro confesses that he was jealous of the man's new relationship all along, having acted out on his emotions. He congratulates Nello, hoping that his baby will grow up to be just like him, but admits that he can't live the same life. The man feels guilty for not having hugged his father for years because of his arrogance, and now that he's getting sicker, Alvaro can't do anything to help him. It's clear to Nettle that his friend has changed, and that's when the surfer moves onto the subject of Ona, knowing that no matter what happens, they will never be together. The man admits that he's never truly been in love, and saw the girl as a savior from all of his issues. But now the feelings have faded, and he has to let her go. This experience has given him perspective, and taught him an important lesson about life. If you can't afford therapy, Almost dying on a beach is the fastest way at making a breakthrough. But what do you think? How would you beat Solo? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. And check out the How to Be playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.